building a light rail system is not just about laying down track and installing new station platforms. There's a lot of discussion and planning that goes on before, during, and even after the work is complete. The Metropolitan Council understands the effects a project of this size can have on surrounding cities, local economy, and importantly, the environment. Federal environmental requirements list 16 different factors to evaluate the potential environmental impacts of our work, ranging from historic properties to air quality, noise and vibration, and visual impacts. Another important factor are wetlands. A combination of design approach, wildlife-friendly construction best practices, adjustments of route alignment or construction sites when needed, guides the Council's work to protect and manage our region's wetlands. My name is Haytham Ibrahim, construction manager for the Southwest Light Rail project. It's considered one of the largest civil infrastructure projects in the state. We are disturbing more than 500 acres of soils, and that level of disturbance make it upon us to have a bigger responsibility by making sure our footprint of impact is minimized, you know, otherwise the consequences are going to be dire or major for any uh, wildlife if we didn't pay attention to issues that rise up. The wetlands are around 10 acres. Eight acres of them project-wide are temporary impacts wetlands, meaning that we eventually are gonna have minor activities done into them, you know, like major, maybe removing trees uh, and then, or just putting fill and removing it. And majority of those 10 acres of wetlands are within city of Eden Prairie and city of Minnetonka. The environmental process for wetland preservation is in, it starts from the planning for the project itself and goes all the way from uh, design through construction and then long-term maintenance. Any restrictions or regulations or guidelines will help the contractor build the bridge or the structure over the wetlands without causing major impacts to the wildlife, to the high value species and plants and seeds uh, and, and, and the ecosystem that will have uh, that uh, surround that wetland area. For the council, I believe we are doing above and beyond in uh, maintaining and preserving uh, areas has high, high value from an environmental standpoint. And after the contractor complete, we still committed to at least another three to five years after construction completion by hiring another consultant with the ability to review uh, the wetland and make sure things are going back to the original condition or better uh, before construction start back in 2019. Some of the areas we end up uh, uh, digging or excavating, we end up cleaning a lot of the contaminated soils and putting clean fill in, in, in instead of uh, the highly contaminated soils and also it means that we managed to build a, a project that will help provide uh, like uh, an alternative mode of transportation instead of people driving cars, but still we cared about the environment we live in. The happy ending for the wetland is uh, you can see the wildlife coming back again to the same area that has been disturbed in the past over the last maybe five or six years. And also you can see the same kind of uh, wetland uh, planting and species try to grow and flourish again. One of the beauties of the project is, is opening access to people to look at areas that have not been available to the public in the past, such as uh, a lot of the flyover bridges we have, especially in Minnetonka and Eden Prairie, fly over wetlands. And those beautiful scenes wouldn't have been possible without uh, the project we have right now. <laughs>